What's up everybody? Haven't seen you guys since the 60s. <laughs> Tripped you guys up, right? Obviously. Okay, so welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 trip trips. My top 10 tips for travel nursing. Before I start, if you would like to know more or if you'd like to follow my travel nursing journeys, please like, subscribe, comment. I would love for you guys to come along with me. So let's get started. My top 10 trip. Why do I keep saying trips? So let's get started. My top 10 tips for travel nursing. So number one, research your agency that you're talking to. I know that for me, like when I first got into travel nursing, it kind of felt like it could be like a scam because it's like you apply and they call you like that. I use Nursefly for a lot of my jobs. That's pretty much all that I use unless I hear about a good agency from somebody else that I've worked with, then I will just contact that agency directly and see what they have. But usually I go on Nursefly because um, they have the rates there, but even sometimes then they'll post like a really high rate and then you apply to the agency and the agency actually has a lower rate. I always like to make sure that I do research the agency because sometimes you can research them and you can find out that there's like lawsuits or you know that they often short on their paychecks or there's just really bad reviews. Maybe they're not as responsive because it's very important to have a very responsive recruiter. You want somebody that if you have an issue at any time of the day or night that they're there for you and they're there to help you solve it in case there's a problem on the job or just with your pay stubs or with getting to work, anything, you need to be able to contact them. My agency that I'm currently working for, it was really hard for me to find bad reviews on them. I actually couldn't find any so that's why I've been with them and I'm kind of staying with them right now because my recruiter is super responsive. I have not had a bad experience with them and I'm just really happy. They do everything that they can to, you know, reimburse me for scrubs if I need to buy scrubs. If I go over their reimbursement limit, they still reimburse me. And it's just little things like that that really do make a difference. Number two, don't stay tied down to one agency. Not to say that you should be jumping around to a bunch of different agencies because I do believe that it is good to stay with, you know, like one or two agencies or maybe even just one and not hop around too much. But you may not be having the best experience with one agency and you could try out a different agency and see if maybe that one's better or maybe that one, maybe the other one has better benefits. And you can always go back to the agency that you had left. Maybe the other agency has higher rates. Those are just some things to consider. And you can also, you can also submit your papers to other agencies while you're working with a current agency just so that you have it ready because the whole thing for me that kind of puts me off from like jumping to another agency even if they have a higher pay rate is that it takes for me I feel like it takes so long to like submit like all your papers and get your physical done it's like getting a whole new hospital job all over again you know I mean obviously that's why like in the three months that I'm working one one contract I'll submit my papers to another agency and just be like hey I'm working this contract already but for when I finish this contract I might be interested in joining your agency for a little bit and I might want to see what's there if I can just onboard with you and be ready and like I said the other agency may have better rates better benefits you never know so it is always important to keep your options open tip number three Okay, so this is something that's kind of foreign to me, but negotiate your pay. So after you've been with an agency for one or two contracts, or even if you're an experienced travel nurse and you're new to that agency, you know, you can negotiate your pay. It may not be by much, but for example, I, when I was supposed to go to DC, I was gonna make a couple hundred dollars more, and then they abruptly switched me to Baltimore, and I was like, hey, you know, can you, try to match the rate that I was going to get in DC and my agency negotiated it and they were able to but you can always negotiate your pay and say you know I'm used to making this much can you try to do this or I've proved that I've been a good traveler with you guys can you you know do something to compensate me a little bit more and make it a little more worth my while I mean don't say it like that but y'all got it just know that you can negotiate your pay and you don't have to take whatever 
the actual number is. But do not try to hit them with, oh, another agency is offering me this because then they'll just be like, okay, go with that agency, <laughs> you know? So just don't ever mention like, oh, yeah, this other agency is offering to give me this, so can you guys give me this or I'm going to go with that agency because they'll just be like, all right, bye. Tip number four. This is a big one. Research the area that you're going to or that you're proposed to be going to before you sign the contract because... For me, at least, I don't want to. I don't like bringing a car wherever I go, and I mean, especially after being in New York, like I just use the public transportation. It's it's nothing to me, you know. Just put on your headphones, keep your head down, and just go to work. I mean, I will take the bus, I'll take the subway, I'll take whatever the train. You know, I try not to Uber too much because that gets expensive, and I'm obviously trying to save the money that I'm making. But like right now, for example, Baltimore has a great bus system. And at first it was free for healthcare workers. Now it's like $70 for like a three month pass. And I take it to and from work every single day. And it's great. I mean, it picks me up right in front of my hotel and it drops me off right in front of the hospital. It's perfect. I'm saving so much money and Uber to and from work would be like $20. So I'm saving basically $40 each shift that I work. And then I'm staying in the city so I can really walk anywhere. But I did find out in my research going to Baltimore that Baltimore actually has a lot of what they call food deserts. And the food deserts are so bad that Lyme actually, is it Lyme? No, what is it? I forget the, oh, Lyft. Lyft actually offers free, or I, I don't know if they still are, but I saw that they were offering free transportation to grocery stores because that's how bad the food deserts are in certain places of Baltimore. So I got really lucky and I'm in between actually like a Whole Foods and this other market called like Streets Market. Oh my God, I love that place. But um, it's very important to just research your area. And then you also want to research, you know, if you're going to stay in a hotel or if you're going to stay in an Airbnb, my suggestion would be to get a hotel first because travel nursing is very unpredictable and Airbnbs, if you don't cancel it within like a month out, you don't get your deposit back usually. So if your contract gets canceled like two days before, like how my DC contract did, you'll lose out on that whole Airbnb. Like it could be like 1500 or twenty, $2,200, however much. And you'll lose out on that entire Airbnb money and you'll be pissed. So my suggestion is to get a hotel first at least for the first few days until you know that you're going to stay there. And then if you want to get an Airbnb, go for it. Because I know that Airbnbs are definitely more comfortable. And, you know, they have like washers and dryers. I'm staying in a residence inn right now, which I do recommend residence inns. Um, they're really, I mean, I like them, you know. This one obviously has a kitchen. Um, it has its own bedroom, a living room. You know, I basically just feel like I'm living in an apartment with just not as nice furniture as my furniture because my couch is so comfortable in my apartment but this also has a um, laundry room not in here but downstairs so those are just things to consider tip number five all right so my fifth tip is for you to try to get a compact nursing license if you can. If you don't know what a compact nursing license is, it's a nursing license that I think it's like 37 states are now a part of. And I'm pretty sure that Maryland was the first state to actually be part of the compact state. So you can go online and you can research if your state is a compact state. And you can also look up which states are in the process of becoming a compact state. And basically it just means like, you know, I have my license in Florida, but I can practice in any of those 37 or however many states are part of the compact licensure. So if you already live in a compact state, I would suggest just automatically going for that license if you want to be a traveler. I know some people who have wanted a compact license but aren't from a compact state and they've actually, you know, they've they've moved to a state that they traveled to that they loved and they got their compact license that way. We're not going to talk about the illegal ways that they do it by just using somebody else's address. Y'all do what you want to do. Moving on. But it does make it a lot easier to travel because you don't have to wait for your nursing license to come through. You can just go. So I like knowing that I'll always pretty much have a job because I have at least, you know, 37 or however many options to travel to. Tip number six, ask about benefits. 
make sure that you ask about benefits before you sign the contract. So you want to know, do they have insurance? When does the insurance run out? Does the insurance run out the day that your contract ends or does it run out at the end of the month that your contract ends? I know that some agencies, if you sign a contract within the next month, so like if my contract ends on, you know, July 1st, but I signed a contract for September 1st, I can keep my insurance all the way through from July 1st to September 1st. So all the way through August, I can keep my insurance. Whereas some places, if your contract ends on July 1st, you only keep your insurance until the end of July, and then you don't have insurance for that one month. So those are some things to consider. Um, also ask if they have a retirement plan and if they match. Some agencies do match. They don't match as much as like some hospitals do. Some hospitals, you know, they match up to like 7% or whatever. Some agencies don't match at all. I know some agencies that match up to like 4% um, after you've worked with them for six months. Also ask about tax and untaxed pay. Tip number seven. So look up the taxes in the state that you're going to be in. For instance, New York, like <laughs> they taxed me out like crazy like crazy so look up the state if they have a state tax if they have a, a city tax a town tax you know a breathing tax like some states have a ton of taxes like new york had a tax for everything it was insane i paid so much tax so many taxes there it's just better to know so that you can kind of gauge like how much actual money you're going to be making so you could be getting a higher paying contract somewhere but you could still be making less money because of all the state taxes as opposed to if you were going to get a lower paying contract somewhere else for a few hundred dollars less but you weren't going to get taxed as much like you know florida doesn't have a state tax but new york has a like a state tax a city tax a everything tax an existence tax like so just check that out definitely and then also make sure that you know um, how much your tax pay is going to be from your from your agency and how much your untaxed is going to be and that also plays into negotiating because agencies they will pay you in like sometimes half your pay tax and half your pay untaxed or like a third of it untaxed and the rest of it taxed so see if you can maybe negotiate to have more of it um, untaxed so that it doesn't get affected by the state that you're going to if they do have a state tax city tax or whatever tip number eight all right tip number eight it's kind of a stupid one but it has changed my life buy a laundry bag and bring it with you i bought it was like an eight dollar laundry bag off amazon and this thing has been my life saver you guys just like a red just laundry bag that has a strap that you can pull that you can use to carry it so if i'm staying in a place that doesn't have laundry if i'm not staying in an airbnb then i can just put i put all the laundry in the bag it also keeps my room clean because i make sure to just put it in there like a hamper and then when it's time to do your laundry you just carry the bag down to either a wash and fold which a wash and fold for like 17 pounds of clothes is like 20 bucks it's great or you take it to the laundry in your hotel or wherever and it's just great for carrying your laundry like definitely buy a laundry bag buy one because otherwise how are you going to carry all your laundry when you need to do it and you don't have a laundry a laundry room in your apartment think about that also while i'm at it uh, i might as well just mention bring some like reusable shopping bags because if you are if you're not bringing a car like for me, I have like these like reusable like Publix bags, like basically just like the reusable shopping bags that are like stronger. So that if you're walking to the market, even though it's, you know, probably only like a five to eight minute walk or maybe a 10 minute walk with your groceries in a regular bag, you know, the bag could break very easily. But in the reusable bags, they, in the reusable bags, you know, they hold up very well. And it's also good for the environment. Tip number nine nine tip number nine check the weather beforehand and i'm not talking about just checking the weather for like that day or like the ne next few days you're there like check the weather for the entire time that you're there and that's where i messed up in new york because i didn't bring any summer clothes and i just brought like leggings and hot winter clothes and when i tell you that 
by the end of my contract, I was sweating and hot as hell. I was hot, y'all. I was super hot. So just make sure that you check the weather beforehand and pack accordingly and do not overpack. I cannot stress, do not overpack. If anything, if you really need to, you can always buy a six pack of underwear or t-shirts or whatever off Amazon for really cheap if you really feel like you didn't pack enough clothes. But do not overpack, it's not worth it. Tip number 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. My 10th tip is for you to bring stuff from home that makes you feel comfortable. Now, I'm not talking like bring like a bunch of stuff from home, but like maybe like a picture of like you and your boyfriend or husband or like for me, what I brought that makes me feel comfortable is like these like two stuffed animals that my boyfriend gave me like when we first started dating. I just put them in the bed with me. It makes me just not feel so lonely in the bed and they're really cute and it just makes me feel a little bit better. So I brought those with me and it makes, it makes it just feel more homey for me. You can bring a picture frame or anything. You can bring a pillow, you can bring your pillow, you can bring a small blanket, whatever. Depends on how much room you have. I didn't have that much room and I couldn't fit my boyfriend in my suitcase, so. So that's pretty much it for my top 10 tips for travel nursing. Last but not least, I really just want to stress that travel nursing is very, very unpredictable. So you have to be going into this willing to go with the flow. You have to be willing to go with the flow and you just have to be like ready for anything. Just know that your contract can be canceled at any time. The contract will say like, oh, like literally like I signed the contract for DC and then they were like, oh, like we don't need her at this hospital, but we need her at this other hospital in Baltimore. Can we send her there? And they just canceled my contract there, like this hospital system, which I'm really happy to be with this hospital system because I really like it. You know, I was I was obviously like a little bit upset because I, I would have preferred to go to DC than Baltimore because, you know, you hear all these bad things about Baltimore, but then I actually came to Baltimore and it's beautiful. I love it. And so you just have to be willing to go with the flow. And that, that also goes along with, um, you know, not buying a hotel, not buying an Airbnb right away because Airbnbs, you really don't get your money back right away um, if you cancel within a month. So if I would have bought an Airbnb um, for DC, I would not have gotten my money back. Whereas I got all my money back when I canceled the hotel for DC. And that's another reason why I like staying in hotels though, because like, I'm, you know, I'm staying in this hotel for three months and I asked them, you know, what if my contract gets canceled tomorrow? Are you going to charge me for the full three months? And they said, no, we'll just charge you for whatever you stayed. Whereas an Airbnb will charge you for the entire length. And so you won't get your money back. So just try to be smart with your money and try to think of anything possible that could happen. Your contract can be canceled at any time. You can sign the contract and they'll cancel it. You can you can be talking to the director of nursing and they'll be saying, no, I'm not going to cancel you. I'm not going to cancel you. And then they'll just cancel you. So just be prepared and you guys will do fine. So if you're thinking about getting into travel nursing, I definitely do think it's a good thing to do. A lot of agencies only require about six months if you're six months of experience if you're a um, like floor nurse, like a telemetry, um, like med surge tele nurse. But if you're a specialty nurse, they usually require at least one to two years in that specialty, depending on the hospital. Unless it's crisis, if it's crisis, sometimes they only um, require six months. I had two years experience before I started traveling in the ICU. I thought like, oh my gosh, I'm so inexperienced. I only have two years. And then I found out that like, they, o <laughs> they only need six months normally. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, so don't be discouraged. I think it's a very lucrative career to be in, but it also comes with the price of the unpredictability. So you just have to be ready for that. And that's pretty much it. So if you are looking into getting into travel nursing, I do hope that this video helped you out. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. I'd love to answer them and I'd love to help anybody out that is considering getting into travel nursing. All right, guys. Like, subscribe, comment for more tips, and I will see you next video. Peace out.